What's up, guys? Blacklisted Voice, episode eight here with Alex Durfler. Um, Alex is a student at, um, oh man, I'm Baylor, sorry. That's okay. Baylor, Baylor yeah. College of Medicine. I was going to say TCU. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's close. That's close. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Alex is a student at uh, Baylor. Um, she's been crossing now for how many years? Um, I actually just thought about this this morning. I think it's coming up on four years. Okay, yeah, crossing for four years. You're actually yeah. in your PhD as well, correct? Mm -hmm. yep. yep. Um, so we're just going to get to know her a little bit, um, figure out a little bit more about her fitness journey and how she's kind of balancing the two PhD and CrossFit lifestyle. So Alex, you want to tell us a little bit more about yourself? Sure. Um, so I'm originally from Albuquerque, New Mexico. And um, I guess to start with my like fitness journey. So when I was growing up, I wasn't um, very, I mean, I was, I was active, but I was not in a sport for the long term. Um, yeah. I think like a lot of people that have gotten into CrossFit. Were you um, guys like outside more like running around as kids or? Yeah, basically like I played every sport under the sun in elementary school, um, but okay. nothing ever really stick, stuck. And, yeah, yeah. Um, but what I was really interested was in was um music and so I played the piano for a long time and then in fifth grade I switched over or fourth grade I switched over to well I played both for a little bit um but I learned started learning the violin in okay. fourth grade. so that was really kind of like my thing growing up yeah. was that and I played with the Albuquerque Youth Symphony and all of that um that's, and, so that's pretty like high level then it was it was high level for Albuquerque <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> It was, I mean, we did some cool, we did some cool stuff. So like my senior year of high school, we traveled to Australia and we played at the Sydney Opera House with some other like high school students that were there, um, <laughs> which was really cool. That was really neat. Yeah. So, was Australia pretty sweet? Yeah, Australia was really cool. I would really like to go back um, and yeah. visit it now because, you know, when you go with a whole group of like high school kids, everybody has to do the same thing, right? <laughs> right, not, right. Yeah, you can't exactly do what you what you really want to do um, yeah you have like six that buddies wanna... that you have to travel with around everywhere and like yeah exactly yeah yeah like set set times to be places yeah exactly and then plus we were um playing concerts and so every day maybe not every day but pretty frequently we would in the evenings we'd have to like set up and warm up and then play a concert and then oh okay yeah yeah was it like a was that like a competition against other like schools or was it just like a music festival it was kind of like yeah it was kind of like a music festival um but with uh like orchestra music <laughs> okay okay yeah, yeah yeah was it like big crowds or yeah it was a pretty big crowd um at, especially at the sydney there was one there was one time that there was only one person in the audience, so that was. Oh man! He got a private <laughs> concert. It, wait, he bought it out? Oh no, he didn't buy it out. No. Oh, he, okay. He was the only person in the audience, and so yeah. that that was a little funny. Um, but we played our concert for him, and so. That's um, sweet. But at the Sydney Opera House, yeah, there were I. I don't know if it was sold out, but like there was plenty of people. So. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Cool. Yeah, um so good. so you started piano and violin and then mm -hmm. you, did you yeah do that? so I did like I did some sports I guess the thing that I did the most competitively was swimming but as soon as high school hit I really wanted to focus on um the violin and school mm -hmm. and so I did that plus they were asking us to get up you know five o'clock in the morning to come to swim practice and I <laughs> I was not about to do that. <laughs> for those, uh, for reference, Alex just said she woke up 30 minutes ago. This is. Yeah, uh, yeah. That, that would be 8.30 my time. time. <laughs> so five is out of the question. Five is out of the question. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's see. Yeah. And then, so I guess I, I had a, I would, I guess I would say typical for Americans, uh, like growing up, like I knew that exercise was important. Both my parents um, were pretty athletic like my dad did amateur um cycling mm -hmm. um, my mom is known for being pretty active she runs and and, and does bicycles uh, cycles a lot okay um but I n nothing ever really stuck for me I guess and then kind of the same story in college like I would stay active in the sense that I would like try to go to the gym and do stuff but I never really enjoyed um any 
any of that. Like, you know, you yeah. go in, especially as a girl, you don't really know what you're doing. For sure, um, for sure. Well, I don't think anybody really, especially now that I've done CrossFit and stuff, like, I don't think anybody really knows what they're doing <laughs> when they go to the gym. But, you know, girls typically are a little bit more intimidated. Yeah. In an undergraduate college Gym. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> With like the football players down in the weightlifting room. Like I'm not about to go like bench press yeah. or anything. So yeah. Yeah. Um, um, and, was it kind of intimidating going into those gyms or was it just like, you were just like, I don't, I don't really care. I'm just going to go in and do my thing and leave or. Um, it was for, it was for a bit. It's not anymore. I'm not intimidated yeah. anymore, which is nice. Um, yeah. But yeah, when I first started going, um, I would really, so the way that the, I went to University of New Mexico and the way that it's laid out is on the lower floor is all the weightlifting stuff. And then, okay. um, and then there's, there's like a pool and stuff like that. And then on the upper floor, there's um, like the treadmills and the ellipticals and there's some like free weights. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would, yeah, pretty much I would stay up on the upper floor every once in a while. I would go downstairs because they would have some stuff that I would want to use like a, yeah. um, like a, probably like like a ghd type thing um yeah, yeah so yeah i would say generally i didn't really like being down there especially if i was by myself I was, if i was with a friend it wasn't it wasn't a problem you know we'd kind of do whatever but right right but yeah you said now you're a little bit more confident to to go into the gym sorry you're a little bit more confident now to go into the gym yeah because i know what i'm doing <laughs> <laughs> what kind of like bridge that bridge that gap then so yeah so then um when i started my phd i came to uh Bayer college of medicine here in houston mm -hmm. and um i met some friends so one of your old clients brandon he was one of them and so he um and i was still kind of doing the same thing where i would do like free weights or like you know body weight workouts and stuff like that um yeah. trying to get toned you know quote unquote yeah. toned yeah. <laughs> yeah. and really not like <laughs> not really doing doing a whole lot there um and so he because he was into crossfit and so he invited me to go work out with him and there were a group of people that would just go and just like uh i i would call it playing around like we would work out but it was basically just like going there and playing around because crossfit yeah. is you know the weightlifting and the gymnastics um and like uh cardiovascular stuff but uh so the first few times I went with them, I kind of stayed off to the side and I kind of kept doing what I had always been doing. Um, yeah. and I just kind of watched them out of the corner of my eye. Like, I don't know yeah, if, I, if I can do this. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and then, um, yeah, I don't really remember when, but there was one day where they were doing a wad. I don't even remember what it was, um, but they were doing a wad. And so I did it with them. And anyway, I thought it was fun. And then I started doing it more and more with them. And um, Brandon was kind of like our coach, I guess. Mm -hmm. And um, he taught me initially how to do all of the Olympic lifting. And um, he's a pretty, he's, he was a pretty good coach. Um, yeah, yeah. He's and, actually gone on to start coaching a little bit more now, right? Yeah, he is. Mm -hmm. I yeah, think he's, yeah. he's doing that full time, actually. Now that oh, he's okay. So, graduated. Yeah. yeah, that's exciting. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so he, and actually, I, it's kind of funny, because I couldn't, he wasn't an official coach, but I think he's better than a lot of the coaches that are out there. And he actually got me like pretty decent base for. Yeah. Starting. Yeah. yeah. Um, he's, he was very knowledgeable when I was working with him as well. So, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. That's sure. good to see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was kind of like your first little experience with like coaching and CrossFit kind of. Yeah. Honestly. That was, that was really my first experience with all of that. And, um, and because it was a group of us and we were all friends, you know, having that to go to the gym, then you go more consistently and yeah, like, yeah. every day at whenever we were done with work, we would go to the Baylor gym. So Baylor um, itself has this gym at the top of a garage that is, um, it's pretty small. It's not like a, yeah, it's not like, <laughs> I've seen videos of, of this. It's Yeah, Brandon it, used to send videos all the time. It was like, man, a 10 by 10 room, probably. I don't even yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, 10 yeah. by 10, it's got this like rig mounted into the wall that looks like it's gonna <laughs> fall off anytime you do a kipping anything on it. It hasn't yet. It hasn't, it yet. hasn't yet. It has not yet. It's got like a lifting platform. 
Um, yeah, we built that. Yeah, actually. yeah, yeah. A cable machine, no. um, and then like a couple other machines in bags, like three machines, uh, and then like some free weights and a squat rack, and that yeah. is that consists of the Baylor uh, gym. <laughs> yep, it works. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the nice thing is it's really cheap. Um, so as a student, it's really nice that it's really cheap, and yeah. uh, they let us drop weights and stuff like that, and they let us do CrossFit stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's, those it's a ragtag gym. <laughs> yeah yeah sometimes those ragtag gyms though like you just train your heart out in them though yeah it's, it actually works really well yeah, yeah like you're just like uh we're in covid right now so a couple of us are training in the garage and it's like yeah the, the old days again like it's just like you're throwing down as hard as you can in the garage like yeah it's, it's so yeah ragtag gyms are pretty legit <laughs> yeah i actually i kind of i like them so yeah yeah <laughs> Um, okay, so you started um, kind of working out with a friend. So you almost got kind of bought in via community then, kind of. Yeah, definitely. I would say that was number one. Um, yeah. And then number two was, like I said, I never, nothing ever really stuck when I was growing up sports wise. Um, yeah. But CrossFit, I think because um, I kind of, I started kind of knowing what I'm doing and like what the movements are supposed to look like and cro proper um, form and, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I think um that helped a lot and so I got more confident there and and it's a lot of different types of movements and yeah. um that helped a lot just to keep my interest and so now I really love um the weightlifting side of it but I've also tried just weightlifting only doing weightlifting and even though I love it I get really bored with it and so with CrossFit yeah, yeah. you know having the other like there's always something that you can improve on and so having the gymnastics part of it um and the you know rowing and running which i'm never good at but <laughs> you're like more weightlifting please <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it's cardio if you cycle for fives right yeah exactly <laughs> My heart rate up. <laughs> that counts. yeah yeah so you, look, yeah. So you, look, you mm -hmm. also like the variety of it then yeah definitely yeah 100 yeah yeah so kind of community and ver variety kind of got you hooked on, yeah on it yep yeah. And so, um, so you, you mentioned you just tried the weightlifting thing only. Um, so like, what are some of your goals right now then? And like, have they changed at all from the past? Yeah. So for a while I wanted to get better at weightlifting. Um, mm -hmm. but so, Hmm. My goals. <laughs> it's kind of I have hard. goals. They've yeah, changed yeah. recently because I can't do a lot of the stuff that I would normally do. Right, right. Yeah, this the goal right now is to not uh, just be able to get back in the gym eventually yeah. when we can and not completely die when I'm back right, in the gym. Right. Not um, not lose your mind right now, staying inside all the time. All the time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, let's go like pre-COVID. Like, what were your goals? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, and I don't exactly know what Matt. We haven't talked about it in a while, so I wasn't not sure what Matt was thinking. But anyway, basically just getting stronger. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's always that's always my goal. Um, yeah, yeah. So I finally have a little bit over a body weight clean, which is exciting. I mean, eventually yeah. I would like to do like a body weight snatch, which I know is like pretty tough, um, especially for somebody that isn't like you know training full-time and stuff like that like having for a body sure, weight snatch sure. but i think you know long long-term like lifetime goal i guess that would be my one of them yeah um and like more consistency with um muscle ups so i can do them but i still only do them as singles okay. um and i'm i'm learning how to feel it coming for some reason on the way back down i just can't can't get that everybody says oh once you get your first one the next ones are always super easy i yeah. can get the first one i can't get the other ones okay okay yeah yeah sometimes um, yeah. yeah it's like a little bit of a, like a balance or uh not balance but like timing thing with how exactly you're falling down yeah and exactly like, and that's what be okay with like feeling like you're falling off the top of the bar which is yeah can be scary <laughs> yeah exactly so i'm still yeah so i'm definitely still working on that um yeah and speaking of feeling comfortable falling down, handstand walks are definitely something that I'm still working on. Yeah, um, yeah. And handstands, and that's actually something that I'm doing a little bit more now in uh, the, during COVID is working on my handstand. So Maddie Rogers did a live Instagram thing last week with like some drills for handstands. And anyway, there was one that she 
recommended where you uh, try to, you bring one foot up and then you try to bring the other foot up to tap, tap to it. And so I've been kind of playing around with that. And that's actually been um, helping me. I held one for maybe like two seconds yesterday. So that was exciting. Okay. Is this, is this against the wall or? No, this is freestanding. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah freestanding free handstand. Day, yeah. So I guess, yeah, just generally, I think more consistency and just getting stronger and, um, and uh, now, so my left shoulder, because I think this is because I played violin for so long, mm -hmm. um, the way that you hold it, your left arm is kind of out in a weird yeah. position. Yep, yep. Yeah. So I have always had problems with my left shoulder okay. and um, it kind of is exacerbated by the assault bike. Um, and it wasn't really a problem for a while. And then we started doing more of the ring muscle up work and then I think maybe I injured it a little bit and so then it, it kind of got uh it got a little bit worse and so now I need to figure out and of course we're I can't actually do this but now I need to figure out and go to a physical therapist and yeah yeah that kind of rehabbed for sure. um because it's it's real it's bugged me probably for about a decade now yeah, so yeah. I would say that's a, that, that'll be another goal for the next year is getting my shoulder fixed <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah the physical therapist seemed to help a lot and yeah I, I was working with a photographer for a while and um she had problems with the shoulder that she like held her camera with yeah. yeah 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 so that it make it would make sense that like the left shoulder for the violin is uh is irritated yeah. but yeah some strengthening work and you should be and some physical therapy should be good to go hopefully hopefully yeah. yeah i'm thinking so i've tried so my mom is a physical therapist um she's back in albuquerque and so i mm. talked with her about it over winter break and so she gave me some stuff to do and that mm. definitely helped and it started feeling yeah. better um but lately it's kind of come back and so i think there might be some tears or some micro tears in it or something and yeah so more eye, but yeah, anyway yeah. well tough, tough to say <laughs> without yeah. it i don't really know but um yeah um, so one thing you mentioned is like uh, body weight snatch is a long-term goal. Um, so it sounds like, you know, you kind of grew up in um, like the music realm, dabbled mm -hmm. in sports, um, but kind of got away from it um, and kind of yeah. reconnected again in college. How have you made the shift in tour, into like making this a lifestyle and kind of like knowing and understanding like this is something you want to do for, um, you know, the rest of your life, if that makes sense? Yeah. I think it's, it really started with um, going to the gym and having like my group of friends there um, yeah. that are there and they're there. We, so I train Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, which is five days a week. And I think most people, particularly when they, most people want to do that. Most people want to have the drive to do that, but they don't really. And I think the biggest thing is because they don't have, um, other than working out, they don't have a reason to be there. And yeah, so yeah. as a PhD student, that's really, people ask me what my hobbies are outside of work and going to the gym. And unfortunately there isn't a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and, and having people who are also PhD students who are going to the gym at the end of the day and like, they're my friends and we yeah. go like going to the gym is basically going to hang out with my friends. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's kind of that's the biggest motivator and yeah. so i've i've actually never really been to a i guess a quote-unquote regular crossfit gym um the main my main gym has always been the baylor gym yeah um and i mean i've done a i have a crossfit gym that i go to paper street and i do a little bit of coaching there mm -hmm. um but as far as like taking classes and stuff like that but i also i think that that's also where people get uh, motivated to go to regular CrossFit gyms as well as um, sure. going there and seeing the people and you know having that interaction. I think that's yeah. that's really what keeps people going and that's what kept me going. And then once you do it for a certain amount of time, then it just starts becoming habit. Mm -hmm. And now you know if my friends aren't going, I'm I'm still going to go and I'm still going to train. On top of the fact that um, having a coach having that where you know if I just like decide not to go to the gym one day because I don't feel like it okay no that's not really a good enough reason <laughs> to not go to the gym because you, you know he's he's put in the time and effort to program for me so right right not, not, then not do it and so 
um, yeah, that's the other motivating factor now, now that I work yeah. with her. Yeah, yeah. So you, you're, you kind of like founded the community that you kind of liked about it at first. And then mm -hmm. like slowly that just evolved into a habit. And now that you have the habit, like the addition of having a coach, Matt, to um, like kind of push you in the gym, give you guidance. And like, you also don't want to let him down, which is huge for yeah. health habits. So like, yeah, you, you kind of, you kind of made it not necessarily a lifestyle, but a habit is, is kind of how you are looking at it long term. Yeah, I would, I would say a habit. And I guess the, the lifestyle portion, like once I got into it, um, I also, um, yeah, I, so this, okay, I'm going to do a little bit of a side tangent, but All good. <laughs> especially not really, it's still related, but so yeah, especially yeah. as a, as a uh, I think a lot of women feel this way, but like growing yeah. up, um, there's, there's just, it's so ingrained in the societal culture to want to lose weight. Yeah. Um, and so the, the other thing about CrossFit is that is not the goal, which right. is the first time that I had ever, this is, this is actually a big, a big reason why I love CrossFit too, is because this is the first time where the goal is not to be as thin as you can. Yeah. The goal is to like, be as strong and as fast as you can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, which is a huge mind um, mindset shift. Yeah, yeah. And so that, um, so when I started doing CrossFit and then, you know, I started going, going more frequently and then you want to get stronger. Well, the only way that you're going to get stronger is if you have your nutrition, right? So, and this, this took kind of some trial and error. This kind of took a while, but, um, mm -hmm. So I started working with some um, like online companies for like tracking your macros and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so that was the first time that I had ever done that. But the problem was that I, my goal that I had told them was to lose fat basically, which yeah, yeah. like you think that that's what your goal is, but that's really not exactly what you right. want. Um, yeah. But I didn't, you know, when, there's this, uh, like you either have your bulking phase, you either have a losing weight phase or you have um, a performance. Mm -hmm. And for me, I was thinking, well, performance, I'm not like an elite athlete, so I, I don't really need to like do that. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't necessarily wanna bulk up, like I don't wanna like get fat, right? And right, so, right. so I, I told them that I wanted to lose weight and then this was also around the time um, well, so I started, so I did that and then I probably d did that for maybe like six to eight months or something like that. Um, and I was losing weight, but I wasn't really gaining strength like I wanted to. And, um, and then I was talking to Matt about it and I told him what my macros were at the time, which I don't, I don't really remember what they were, but they were pretty low. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and so he has his experience with, um, Jen Mm -hmm. and um some other people and i think um so he was really concerned about that and so he told me to talk to jen about it and so she um mentioned to me that she was working she had this registered dietitian that she worked with and so i actually yeah. started working with her registered dietitian and immediately um the registered dietitian her name is aaron so immediately aaron um bumped up all of my calories yeah. like a ton which okay. was awesome <laughs> so, like a new person. <laughs> yeah it was like it was just it was amazing and so yeah. um <laughs> being able to eat all of the carbs that I could possibly want was just like awesome yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so um so going so working with her that that also took a while and that really affected my mindset because um it, it's really it was really hard for me to gain weight Mm -hmm. um, and I gained a significant, over the last year and a half or so, I've gained a significant amount of weight, probably about 25 pounds. Yeah. Um, and just from, you know, kind of obviously following you through our company, like your lips have also gone up significant amounts, like over the yeah. last few. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. And that, that's definitely directly related to um, the food. And like, I'm noticing now I'm noticing like, okay, I've definitely put some muscle on, um, yeah. especially like in my legs. I can, I can see that now, which like, that was always kind of something that I wanted, but I never got to. And it wasn't until I started eating appropriately 
and yeah. gaining weight and allowing my body to like gain that muscle. Um, sure. I was able to see that. And then on top of that, um, like also like the pulling movements, which are normally pretty hard, um, like those got easier as well. And, Very and so, yeah, just being able to gain muscle um, was really nice being it whenever you're funny, whenever you eat, like you're supposed to, <laughs> your body like, gains muscle. Yeah. Yeah, it's so strange. Yeah, um, yeah. So that I think that was that was pretty big, and so that also coincided, I guess, with the, the lifestyle stuff. So yeah, actually yeah. working with not just a quote unquote nutritionist, but an actual registered dietitian that works with sports athletes. For sure. Um, that was really big, and and also through the gaining the weight, it was because I trusted her, um, because Jen trusted her. You know, I trusted yeah. her. And, um, you know, I would tell her, you know, I, I'm gaining weight and she'd be like, okay, how much have you gained? And I'd tell her and she'd be like, no, I'm not really concerned about that. And then because she wasn't concerned, I'm like, okay, I'm not concerned then. Um, yeah, yeah. About it. So, okay. uh, so that helped a lot. And so, yeah, I guess that kind of those two things where you go going to the gym every day because your friends are there and because it's fun Yeah. and, um, then also getting the nutrition in line and For sure. and that also just that's also really more habit than it is anything else um, yeah yeah for sure yeah, for sure so. yeah just like planning. going in making sure like you're buying the right groceries like cooking right out. exactly you have what you need and yeah yeah yeah, yeah for sure yeah. um so like uh you kind of chatted a little bit about um you know the mindset inside america is always get skinny always get skinny and like you yeah and it's like almost the polar opposite of that like we're, yeah. we're pushing performance and we're pushing health like uh was that like did you always know kind of in the back of your mind like this isn't like american mindset of like what health is like this isn't what i want out of life and there's it seems like there's something wrong with that and like then when you walked into the crossfit gym and you you saw like you know strong women and you know women moving huge weights muscular women like was that kind of just like a, a relief and like you knew you belonged instantly or can you kind of take us through like, you know, that, the feelings that you were getting uh, during that time? Yeah, it's um, so growing up, like I said before, both my parents were pretty athletic, including my mom. And I never had the experience of like that a lot of women have of like somebody commenting on my weight or like on my body. Like, I think my mom did a really good job with that. Um, I never heard her commenting on her own body or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But somehow still, and my mom was always, um, like, she was always very health focused. So like, as long as you're doing some sort of physical activity and trying to eat well, like whole grains and stuff like that, like all the stuff that's coming out now that we know it's healthy. Like my mom was telling me to do like when I was growing up. So. <laughs> Ahead of the game. Right, mom is always right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that, and so it's, it's, it was still ingrained in me though, like the whole societal culture of wanting to like get, and, and it wasn't necessarily a goal of mine to, ne to get skinnier necessarily. I just wanted yeah. to look better, um, yeah. which in my mind meant, okay, well, I guess I just like, I need to lose this like extra layer of fat or whatever. Um, oh, okay. And that's, and that also comes from the majority of female um, I don't want to say influencers because it wasn't, you know, when I was growing up, thank God, I didn't, there wasn't Instagram influencers, yeah. but like the female, the people that I would see in the fitness space who were female. Yeah. Like on the, what it was. yeah. Like on magazines and like Barnes and Noble and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, and and so I, that, that's kind of in your mind. Um, I didn't necessarily know that there was something wrong with it or that it was just, it's a little bit backwards mm -hmm. um, until I started working in cro or doing uh, CrossFit. Yeah. And then you kind of realize like there's these badass women and I'm, I'm not even talking about like the games athletes, like the games athletes are awesome right. there, but they're on a whole other level. But yeah. when you walk into just a regular CrossFit gym and you see these women, just regular women who like are doing this and then they go to work, they're throwing yeah. around these huge weights Yeah, yeah. and like, they have muscles and you can see it and they've got their, 
you know, they're all shape, shapes and sizes. For sure. They're not like the fitness models that you would normally see. And they've got like, I guess, especially in Houston over the summer, it gets really hot. So they've got their booty shorts and their sports bra on and they just like, don't give a crap what they look like. Yeah. yeah. The point is to win the workout. It's like, yeah, that's not something that you see literally anywhere else. Right. Right. And so that definitely is just like so awesome to see that within CrossFit because you won't get that you won't, you won't find that anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. And, You're and right. having that kind of permission to like do that yourself and to like, I guess, quote unquote, get big and like want that to be the goal of wanting to get stronger and wanting to not caring what other people think about it. Mm-hmm. Um, having that space to be able to do that is definitely it's yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, There's, sure. It's hard to describe. It's, it's like a shift in your psyche where yeah. It's, we almost just feel like a little bit more safe, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure, for sure, yeah. And I also, yeah. I would also say growing up, um, like if I would go out on a run and stuff and there would be somebody, like I'd see a guy out of the corner of my eye and you get like a little bit nervous. <laughs> this is terrible. This is such a, this is just, it's terrible that that's how it is, but it is. But, um, you know, you get a little bit nervous. And so once I started getting stronger and uh being able to like do weights that you never thought that you would be able to do Mm -hmm. it's definitely empowering and like I I'm not afraid about you know going out and like if there's a guy like I I don't have the same reaction as I used to a certain extent it's still there a little bit um but uh yeah being able to like feeling stronger and and feeling like you know, you can kind of take care of yourself. Like that's. that's yeah. Huge. Yeah. 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 It's uh, definitely not a perspective that like I would have <laughs> being a guy. You know? so, <laughs> yeah. it's Who's pretty- like, how tall are you? You're like six <laughs> foot. Yeah, like, and, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like, it's very interesting to hear, um, you know, the, like how your mindset's kind of like formed and shaped and like how much, you know, because mindset is a uh, is part of like the health continuum, you know, and if, yeah, definitely. You know, if you're feeling safe, like that's just um, inside the gym and outside the gym, like that's just going to contribute that much more to to your health, you know. So it's very yeah, cool to, to see that and hear that. So glad yeah. uh, glad that's a positive side effect of of lifting weights. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not just getting stronger. It's a whole. Yeah, it's a yeah. whole. It's like your whole life. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And then yeah. being able to see that now is since I do a little bit of coaching, um, being able to see that in other women who come in and start doing CrossFit and like, oh yeah, it's so cool. That's yeah. the other. That's my favorite thing now is whenever I'll, I'll tell somebody, um, you know, I'll tell a girl like, okay, I think you can add some weight on there, and they're and they're like, well, I don't know, like that's I've never done more than this, and it's like yeah. sixty five pounds or something, and I'm like, no, I think you can add like let's add some two and a half on or something like that, and then they. And then from there, it's like the gates are open and then they just <laughs> yeah. and it, it's just is there like, it's so is there cool. like just a look of joy or like shock on their face or? Yeah, definitely. It's like, it's just these, yeah, these smiles and they're like, oh my gosh, I never thought I could do that. And you know, yeah. it's so cool. Yeah. 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 That's very cool. <laughs> that's sweet. You get that much more out of coaching too. So very cool. Yeah, definitely. I would, I would say it's even more fun when somebody, when it's somebody else than. For you, sure. For even. sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's why a lot of us get into coaching. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's cool to, cool to watch other people succeed and just like push past what they thought they were capable of. For yeah, sure. exactly. And having a little part of that is always like, that's, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so you are a PhD student <laughs> and you are training. Um, <laughs> what, like, what have you done to develop like a set structure and a set, you know, schedule to make sure you are consistently getting in the gym, um, you know, making sure you are motivated to get into the gym, not overworking in one area versus the other. Like, can you take us through that process a little bit? Yeah. So to start with, I would say um, everything, I guess everything is kind of coming back to this, but having that group of friends um, at five or five 30, like whenever we're done with work for the day, we would go to the gym Mm -hmm. And when I say go to the gym, I literally mean like the gym is connected to Baylor. Like I said, it's at the top of the garage. So I would just 
go to the gym before going home. Okay. Um, and so balancing that with school, I would say also as a, as a PhD student um, and my boss, this is also kind of dependent on, on what boss you have. Um, but for the most part, because we're expected to work as much as we do, our hours are fairly flexible. Um, so the first year or two, I would try to keep a pretty strict like, uh, like 8.30 to 5.30 or um, it's now really turned into more of a nine to five, basically, okay. um, where I'm at work and then at the end of the day, um, I go to the gym and train for an hour and a half to two hours or so mm -hmm. and then go home. Um, <clears throat> I think especially, and also as, as PhD students, we are expected and we just, the nature of getting a PhD, you do work really long hours. Yeah. Um, so you work more than 40, 40 hours a week. And a lot of students, I would say 80%, if not more, um, <clears throat> especially if you're a single student, like if you don't have family um, in the area and uh, like if you don't, if you're not married or have a kid, people really tend to overwork themselves and they really, health kind of goes on the back burner. For sure. <clears throat> and um, so I think generally just keeping that, um, that schedule where at a, at a certain time of the day, no matter where I am in my experiments or what I need to get done for the day, I go to the gym. Okay. And if I need to go back to lab, then I can go back to lab after that. Um, but I'm coming up on, I'm gonna be in my, uh, so I'm finishing my fifth, fifth year this year. Okay. So yeah. I've been doing this for a while. Um, <clears throat> so I generally know like how much I can get done in a day so that whenever I'm done at the gym, if I need to go back to lab, I only go back to lab for maybe half an hour and then I go home. So I'm always home by um, like 7.30 or 8 o'clock and then yeah. I'll eat something, you know, maybe watch some TV and then I go to bed. Okay. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> um, and I think the, the biggest thing is really not letting other people influence that like always making that a priority yeah okay um, because a lot of the time what happens is um i think people i think students think that they need to get a certain amount done to be productive and then if they get that done then like if they get all these little things done mm -hmm. <clears throat> then over the long term you're going to graduate earlier Okay. And for the nature of my PhD, and particularly because it's molecular biology, yeah. um, the more that you work, that does not translate to graduating sooner. Oh, and that's okay. something that I've learned um, just by watching people. <laughs> I mean, I see people who are working their ass off and um, doing, you know, 12 hour days, six days a week, and they're not going to graduate any sooner than I am, just oh. because that's just for whatever reason, the projects go in, uh, in a different direction than what you would expect or, yeah, you know, whatever. Um, there's, there's really, I don't want to say there's no reason to overworking yourself, but really there's no reason to overworking yourself. And so mm -hmm. keeping the, that schedule, um, is really, has been really important for my mental health and also for my physical health. For sure. um, and knowing that I, work as, as much as I do also, you know, you have to allow yourself to go and have fun, which for me is going to the gym and like, you know, doing a bunch of pull-ups or something like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pull-ups and lifting some weight, let's go. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it also helps with like stress release and stuff like that, so. For sure, for sure. So you, you kind of like, um, you're looking at graduation more as like a long-term, again, like a long-term aspect and like. You're yeah. Like, I don't need to put in all this work up front if it's going to take me the same amount of time in the end. Like I can partition the work and spread out the work, still graduate in the set amount of time and keep a different schedule that'll keep me happy and sane and like living a, a somewhat normal life, basically. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Right on. Definitely right on. how I, how I view it. I would say. Yeah. 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 Um, what, so like, what is your PhD? Like, what are you working on? Like obviously molecular bi- biology, but like what, what specifically are you working on right now? Yeah. So um, I'll give you the really long answer and then I'll give you the short answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so what my actual PhD in will be um, molecular physiology and biophysics. Okay. And I study uh, my thesis specifically will be the role of the mevalonate pathway in intestinal lipid uh, synthesis. Okay. Which is a whole bunch of fancy words, basically, just to say that I work on um, the way that our intestine uh, absorbs uh, cholesterol and triglycerides. How it uh, not not just absorbs, but how it, it's processed. Yeah. Um, and so I, I specifically work on uh, cardiovascular disease. And so um, within that sphere, so statins, um, if that, if people recognize statins, so those are the drug that are, it's the number one prescribed drug around the world and it's to reduce uh, cholesterol in your blood. And the interesting thing is that we don't, totally understand how it works and specifically we well we know we know how it works but we don't really know um how it affects its effects in different tissues and um other there are some side effects that can occur whenever somebody takes a statin like um rhabdomyolysis actually um it's it's very rare but um that can happen and uh we don't there's been some pretty good studies with the rhabdomyolysis um, with the muscle tissue uh to better understand why that happens but there's some other side effects that um we don't really understand like there's an increased risk for type 2 diabetes um glaucoma um and uh then other other than that there's some other uh side effects that aren't as that are more common but not as severe like gut issues and and stuff like that um and so basically my research it's very there's a translational bent but it's very basic science uh, oriented. So uh, I'm at, I'm at a bench, I'm pipetting stuff. I uh, work with small animal models. You know, it's, yeah. it's not like it's directly going to affect people um, and how uh, clinicians prescribe drugs or anything like that. But maybe over the long run, you know, 50 years down the line, it might affect something. It, yeah. It'll add to the knowledge base where, you know, 50 years down the line, maybe it'll have some sort of influence. So yeah, yeah. Like alter how statin, statin's made or something like that, or yeah, and like, and how clinicians might prescribe them, maybe, or um, okay. just their general understanding for how they how they work. And if so, right now the general consensus is that everybody, some doctors believe that everybody should be on a statin, um, but that's not always the case. You know, some people have side effects and stuff. And so, better understanding yeah. that, so that clinicians can better understand how to prescribe or um, supplement a patient with other stuff to better help them. Them. okay yeah yeah very cool very cool well yeah. hopefully it finishes up soon and you can get on with <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> yeah COVID with, COVID, with the with all the crap happening right now it's it'll delay it a little bit but hopefully maybe about a year and a half and i'll be graduated we'll see right on right on yeah. Um, well, to kind of finish up the podcast here, um, we've been asking people who is one influential person inside of their fitness journey or career. Um, do you have a Do you have a specific individual in mind, or? Um. Yeah, I guess after this conversation, probably. Uh, I, I guess I'll say two. I'll say Matt and Jen. Am I allowed to say two? Yeah. yeah <laughs> okay. <sure. laughs> <laughs> I would say Matt. And I think in the last couple of years, they've had the biggest influence on me, um, fitness yeah. and, and lifestyle wise, and kind of getting everything from their recommendations and their um, their own experiences. That's yeah. definitely helped me and helped me be healthier and kind of get to the goals that I that I want to get to. Yeah, yeah. We should have mentioned this sooner, but uh, if you guys haven't picked up yet, Matt is Alex's coach. Um, oh yeah, yeah, he's my coach. <laughs> <laughs> sorry matt we apologize um but you, you guys have been working together for about two years now correct yeah actually um i guess end of i think end of may beginning of june it'll be about two years yeah yeah and i yeah. could not i could not have asked for a better like match with a coach i think it just kind of randomly happened that he ended up being my coach um yeah. and so he 
has, I think you've talked, you guys have talked about this before, but he um, understands the whole PhD thing because he went yep. for a PhD in mathematics. Yes. So he gets that yeah. and yeah. Um, <laughs> himself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So when I, so that's the other part of it, I guess, from one of your questions earlier about um, balancing the training and, and school. Yeah. Uh, 100% if I have a really long day, um, just being able to text him and say, like, uh, can I adjust this in my training or coming, like, if I know that I'm going to have a super busy week coming up, mm -hmm. um, we kind of, we can adjust my schedule around that or my yeah, training yeah. schedule around that. Um, yeah. he, and he totally gets it and 100% and, um, yeah, I, he, it's great having him as a coach. He's a great coach. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. I can also attest to that. Matt is an excellent coach. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, if you guys are looking for a coach, definitely hit Matt up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah cool. Um, and Jen kind of helped, you know, kind of guide you to um, Aaron, your nutritionist, correct? Yeah. So Aaron and um, talking with her about that. And then also just generally, she's got some great, I've also asked her advice for like for a while I was um, doing morning workouts. So I asked, cause she does morning workouts. Oh, yeah, and yeah, so I was asking. Yeah. Yeah. She works. Out yeah. So she's well. the one that wakes up at four o'clock in the morning and goes, work, goes and works out. At five. <laughs> yeah. And I, I tried that for a bit. It's really hard. Um, <laughs> so she gave me some good advice for that. And just generally, you know, um, I've, I've called her about, um, I don't know about a lot of different stuff and she's just give, she just has some really good advice. Yeah. For sure. So she's, For sure. she's been a good person to talk to. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, fitness power couple over there. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> fitness coaching power couple. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And now she's like, she's killing it in the weightlifting world. Like she national, qualified yeah. for nationals and stuff. And like, she's, yeah, which yeah she's doing great. Currently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which sucks. <laughs> but hopefully that they're that hopefully they're postponed and not canceled here. So Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, we'll see how cool. that goes. Cool. Um, how do people find you or get a hold of you if they have some some questions or wanted to ask you kind of like your advice on some stuff? Um, yeah, so I guess Instagram probably is the easiest. Um, it's the easiest thing to say here too. Um, so let's see, what's my handle? Alex. I think it's underscore underscore and then Marie M A R I E and then another underscore. <laughs> lots of underscores. Uh, lots of under un lots of underscores. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just through there and just DM and I'm pretty open and happy to talk to people. So for sure, right on. Well, it's great chatting with you today. Thanks for thanks, thanks for coming on. Uh, yeah. I hope you uh, since the morning. I'm assuming you haven't trained yet, so hope you nope, uh, <laughs> <laughs> hope you crush your training session here. Thanks. And we'll, uh, yeah. we'll chat soon. If you guys are listening um, via iTunes, please give us a follow on YouTube and Instagram. You can do a search blacklisted HQ or blacklisted period HQ on Instagram. Um, if you guys find us on Instagram, please follow us on iTunes and uh, give this one a listen or other podcasts a listen. So thanks guys. Thank you, Alex. Yeah. Have thank you. Day. Thanks.